Hello, I am Robert Sakavage, President and Judge of the Court of Common Pleas of Northumberland County. In my career as a private lawyer, district attorney, and judge, I have seen the devastating effect which domestic violence has on victims and the children, as well as the community. In 1976, the Pennsylvania General Assembly enacted a landmark piece of legislation, the Protection from Abuse Act, whose purpose was to provide immediate protection from physical and sexual abuse for family or household members. Over the years, the act has been amended a number of times to more fully address the problem of domestic violence. The act provides broad powers to the courts to bring about a cessation of violence to the victims. The remedies available under the act are generally civil in nature. However, violations of a court order can lead to the imposition of fines or incarceration for contempt of court. It is important to know that there are other remedies which may be available to victims of domestic violence, including divorce or separation, criminal charges, custody and support litigation, or lawsuits for money damages. As you watch this video, remember that filing a protection from abuse complaint is something you should not do without understanding your options and the consequences of your filing. The court will take your lawsuit seriously, and if you prove your case, grant some or all of the relief that you request. Hello, my name is Pete Mackey. I'm the managing attorney of the Sunbury Office of Susquehanna Legal Services, and I am joined today by Dee Dee Burnett, who is the legal advocate for Susquehanna Valley Women in Transition, and John Messer, who is the director of Men in Training Services, both in Lewisburg. Today we would like to discuss some of the options available to victims of domestic violence, what happens if a victim decides to file a complaint for protection from abuse, how the hearing is conducted, what are some of the uh, features involved in a court order granting protection, and what happens after the order has been issued. Dee Dee, what is Susquehanna Valley Women in Transition? Uh, SWIT is an agency that provides services to victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. We have offices in three counties, Snyder, Union, and Northumberland. Okay. There are two shelters. We recently opened a second shelter and we provide a variety of services including legal advocacy. What services are available to victims of domestic violence? We provide immediate support services, crisis intervention, uh, hotline services, uh, children's program, outreach, and legal advocacy, counseling ongoing. What is your role as a legal advocate? My role as a legal advocate is to provide support to my clients, act as liaison between different legal systems and my clients, and provide them with various options that are available to them. What are some of the legal options available to victims of domestic violence? Since in many cases domestic violence is a crime, in those situations there's the possibility of criminal charges. There's also the possibility of divorce or separation and in many cases as well victims of domestic violence may petition the court for protection from abuse. If a victim decides to file a complaint for protection from abuse, what are the steps that uh, he or she must take in order to get such protection? It's fairly easy. Uh, simple process doesn't require an attorney. Uh, it's a matter of picking up the blank forms either at the courthouse or my office. If you come to my office, one of the advocates will sit with you for a period of time, discuss the pros and cons of filing a court order, uh, if you decide to go ahead and file it, you bring it to the courthouse, file it, the judge reviews the paperwork, and if he decides to sign it, 
the sheriff will serve the defendant and within 10 days there will be a hearing. What services do you offer once someone has filed a complaint for protection from abuse? I typically stay in close contact between the time of the filing and the time of the hearing, uh, answer any questions the client may have about the process. Um, I connect her either with uh, a pro bono attorney or Susquehanna Legal Services. Um, I accompany the victim to the PFA hearing. Uh, I provide moral support, uh, ongoing services are usually referred to other counselor advocates. John, what is uh, Men in Training Services? Men in Training Services is a program that began early in the year 2000, offering a set of services to men who were at risk for abuse. It began under the auspices of the District Attorney's Office in Union County. How do men find out about your services? Men find out about our services uh, in a number of different ways. We are starting to get visible every way we can think of. One way is that uh, in some cases men are apprised of the resources available to them at the time a protection from abuse order is filed with the court and served on them. What services might be available to a man who has been referred to your program by the court after the granting of a protection from abuse order? Services available through Men in Training Services, which we sometimes call MITS, include consultation, evaluation, group training, and referral. For men who first come to us, we offer a one to two hour at no fee conversation where we look at where that particular guy is and what might be most appropriate for him. If he's interested in pursuing that, we then offer an evaluation which is often quite thorough and can take up to eight hours. Uh, if it is appropriate, we then work with the gentleman to consider the possibility of signing on to a 28-week program that we offer, which is focuses specifically on accountability to the guy himself and to changing some of his behavior. If that turns out to not be appropriate, we also offer referral services to other uh, resources that might be appropriate to him and of use to him at that time. One thing that's very important for anyone considering filing a protection from abuse to know is that this is an education program and while we do see a lot of men turn their behavior around and learn new ways of being, it is no guarantee for the safety of someone filing a protection from abuse. Safety on the part of the victim and other people implicated needs to be addressed entirely independent of this program. I'm talking with Sherry Llewellyn, who is the hearing officer for Northumberland County. Sherry, what exactly is your role as a hearing officer in this county? Well, my role is essentially, Attorney Mackey, to conduct evidentiary hearings on the protection from abuse cases that are filed here. They have to be heard within 10 days of filing, and our hearings are generally scheduled on Thursdays. Um, we set aside that day for that purpose. And once I have hearings on those matters, I write a report and recommendation, and that becomes an interim order, and either party has 10 days to appeal that decision to the court. Okay. What uh, exactly happens when somebody comes to your office to file a complaint? Well, generally speaking, they uh, fill out a petition, and they can do so with or without the assistance of Susquehanna Valley Women in Transition. Um, the petition is then taken up to the judge to review, and the judge either grants or denies the petition at that point. If the judge grants the petition, uh, what happens at that point? At that point, the hearing is scheduled for 10 days, within 10 days from the time of the filing. Uh, the petition is then uh, copied and taken to the prothonotary for filing, 
and then to the sheriff's office for service upon the defendant and upon various police departments that need to be notified. There are usually costs involved in filing any action in court. What happens with uh, the issue of costs in domestic violence cases? The Protection from Abuse Act allows the petition to be filed without prepayment of cost, which is un unlike any other civil action that gets filed. However, the costs are still there. So it is determined at the time of the hearing whether the costs are imposed upon the defendant or upon the plaintiff or split in some way or even waived if, if both parties are clearly indigent. Um, the costs generally range somewhere between $250 and $350. When someone files a complaint and the uh, documents are taken up to the judge to review, what are some of the factors that the judge looks at in deciding whether or not to grant the petition? Well, obviously, in order to file a protection order, there has to be some sort of intimate or family-type relationship, whether it's a parent, child, uh, brother, sister, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, people who have children together, etc. That has to be uh, in place before a PFA can be granted. It can't be just a neighbor against a neighbor. Mm -hmm. Additionally, the judge looks to see whether or not there's recent physical abuse and or serious threats of serious bodily injury. And those have to be recent. Um, you can't come in after a couple of years and say something happened a couple of years ago, now I want a PFA. It needs to be something recent uh, for the judge to grant the petition. So once the judge uh, signs the order, uh, if uh, he does, and grants the emergency or temporary relief, there must be a hearing within 10 days. The sheriff serves the complaint on the defendant and various other uh, agencies like the police. At the hearing, uh, can you describe what happens? Well, generally speaking, the attorney for the plaintiff uh, meets with either the defendant or the defendant's attorney to see whether or not the parties can reach some sort of an agreement. Most PFAs are resolved by way of an agreement and uh, those are usually entered without the defendant having to admit any of the allegations but agrees to the terms of the order in terms of staying away from the residence or not having any contact. And if the defendant wishes to have a hearing, they may do so. And that is the point where I would have testimony from all parties, any witnesses, and I would issue a report and a recommendation. Is the hearing usually concluded the same day that it's scheduled? Generally speaking. Is this a civil or a criminal matter? This is a, a civil matter. However, uh, penalties for a defendant violating the order are, are indirect criminal contempt. And what that generally means is that there are some criminal penalties such as fines of up to $1,000 and jail of up to six months. If uh, there is a claim by the plaintiff that the defendant has uh, violated the court order and committed contempt. How are those cases handled? Well, usually those cases are handled by the police if they respond to a call uh, that the defendant is either calling or, or coming over to the residence. And they will then issue a criminal citation for indirect criminal contempt. Uh, if the police do not act on that, the plaintiff could file a private criminal complaint requesting indirect criminal contempt on the PFA. And who conducts the hearing if there's a charge of indirect criminal contempt? That hearing goes before the judge. Okay. Uh, sometimes we find that uh, after an order has been issued, and how long can such an order be in place? Generally speaking, the orders are in effect for a year, up to a year. Uh, the orders cannot, um, can be extended after that time if there are repeated violations and that that can be extended as long as it's necessary. Uh, sometimes we find that uh, after the order has been granted over the course of weeks or months the uh, plaintiff wishes to either drop the order or change the order. Is that possible? Plaintiffs can change or drop the order if they want to. They need to remember that all of the cost must be paid prior to doing so. The, we encourage them to 
talk to their lawyer or to someone from Women in Transition prior to doing that. We want to ensure that they're not being threatened or coerced in any way to do that. And um, it's important to know that they, if they wish to have contact with the defendant, they need to get that order changed prior to doing that because, because plaintiffs can be held in civil contempt if they just decide that they're going to have contact even though the order's in effect. Thank you very much.